please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Uh, good morning, Rajiv. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, well, actually, one doesn't know where to begin. Uh, it's a 45% CAGR in profit that you have delivered from FI15 to FI18. But uh, what from here on? Now you are a fairly large size. So what kind of a reasonable loan growth? Let's start with that. Loan growth can you look at for FI19 and FI20? Lata, thanks for having us. Uh, so just to correct you, we're not a reasonably large bank. We are, we are coming into our own and it takes time to build a franchise. So I, I would reserve the comment large for maybe five, eight years from now. But we're seeing uh, opportunity. We've guided the market that we will grow our business between 30, 35% compounded till our vision 2020. Uh, we think that's achievable with the, with the quality scale uh, and the talent we have. Uh, our businesses across all dimensions are, have reached um, you know, critical mass and the learning curve is behind us. So we see opportunities in most areas. And we think overall, uh, while there is continued, obviously, macro volatility uh, from a global perspective or oil or inflation or interest, there are opportunities for well-placed institutions to continue growing this business. And we see opportunities there, at least for the next several quarters to years, to continue our journey ahead. Okay. Rajiv, hi. Good morning and thanks for speaking with us. Uh, the one thing that really stands out in your business is the way you've been growing the retail portfolio. In the year gone by, it's seen a 42% growth, in FY18 that is. I wanted to understand if this pace of growth is something you can continue and where will it come from? Um, is the MFI book growing at a good pace or are you seeing the credit card segment uh, outpace growth? Yeah, Sonia, I think we, we've, as we mentioned before, we started investing in our retail businesses very early, uh, almost 2011-12 in the inclusive finance space and 2014 onwards in the broader retail space. I think all of them need significant upfront investment, creating underwriting and risk capacity analytics, uh, go to market, and all of them are now coming into their own uh, inclusive finance, which is not just microfinance, there are many other aspects to it. Uh, is come back after last year's uh, you know uh, catch up we had to do post demonetization that's growing well we're adding more distribution more we've acquired 100 percent of swadhar which is our captive bc which gives us enormous on the ground power uh, our cards franchise obviously uh, that takes time i think uh, this year we will more than double our cards franchise uh, our business loans which is our third segment in retail is uh, is at a fair clip and we think there are interesting opportunities em emerging over the next three four years as we look at the requirements of small businesses uh, plus the fact that data analytics gst are going to make it more interesting to do business here so on all three segments inclusive finance uh, consumer personal which is really cards for us as well as business we're seeing uh, growth opportunities which frankly have been invested in over the last four five years which is why we are seeing the growth right now uh, don't see a challenge in continuing the growth over the next several uh, quarters and years okay uh, now from growth let's come to margins you know your cost to income ratio is still what you may call high it's about 51 uh, and uh, uh, that obviously has an impact on the ROE as well uh, it's at what 11.2 uh, at this point in time the last number we have Will you be able to uh, down this cost to income ratio and up the ROE? Yeah, so Lata, if you actually see the cost income ratio, which frankly for us is a reflection of two things. One is uh, all franchises, especially banks, have to be invested upfront in terms of uh, physical scale, people, technology, process. And it takes time to reach that kind of uh, learning curve. That has been invested in over the last several years. And if you track our cost income, let's say from FI16 onwards, we have consistently brought it down because two things have been happening. Our scale has been increasing and the businesses we invested in early are starting to create profit pools today. We will continue to be a high investment driven bank. We still think there's a lot of opportunity. But the important thing is every new investment has a greater operating leverage for us, which is why you'll see our ROAs climb every year. If you see our ROA, FI16 was sub 1%.
we've closed FI 18 and 120 plus. So every year our ROA trajectory will reflect two things, that in spite of a continued investment in the scale and franchise, we will keep delivering better and better operating leverage. Cost income is just one component. Obviously, it needs scale, size, and time in the market. And I think all of those will contribute to an increasing ROA trajectory over the next few years. Can you do a, a, a loan growth of 35% uh, plus? Because this is what some analysts are forecasting, given that your product portfolio has now become so diverse. Yeah. No, I, I think, Sonia, that's pretty much possible. I think we've grown our book... Uh, in the previous quarter about 36 percent year on year uh, we've guided the market that to expect 30 to 35 percent compounded uh, over the last uh, four year period till 2020 i think we are within that zone so we are highly confident of achieving that what about margins four percent maintainable uh, i'm sorry Lata, i couldn't margins net interest margins is four percent maintainable yeah, so I think we've also been uh, fairly clear that uh, two things are happening. Obviously, uh, the CASA journey has kept improving uh, over the last two, three years. Uh, plus, the mix of uh, retail and wholesale has allowed us to improve our margins. Uh, this year, I think the cost of funds uh, has uh, increased much faster than the, uh, the yields for the loan side. So there was uh, some pricing pressure, but given the mix of businesses we are seeing, a move to retail. We are confident that we can maintain a NIM of 4% in spite of a higher cost of funds, which we uh, have witnessed over the last six, eight months. Okay, okay. I just well, you know, yeah. there is a lot of buzz, uh, uh, Rajiv, and I know this is like pure kite flying. I don't want investors uh, to get misled. But at the time of the big uh, Kotak Axis merger talk, there was also talk of RBL Indusind at some distant date. Uh, I mean, is inorganic on your radar at all? Uh, Lata, uh, we don't have any plans on the table. I think I was on your show a few months ago and we were very explicit. Uh, we obviously watch what's happening, mm. but we have enough on our plate, enough opportunity, and frankly, I'd rather grow 30-35% on our own steam, create more evidence of operating leverage, better ROA, better risk control, better talent development, better brand creation than, than get distracted with something which we are not, frankly, uh, in a position or would like to uh, absorb. So uh, nothing on the cards and frankly we are uh, in some manner a fairly inward focused uh, team. Uh, we really want to get everything better and better. Uh, and that's what keeps us busy. Okay, and will you be raising capital? I mean, you're growing at 35% and you're 14% capital adequacy. You may need capital shortly, right? Yeah, so I, I think we raised capital last August, which should last us at least till end of calendar 19. We've again been very explicit with the investors that we don't see the need for another tier one raise, uh, a common equity raise till at least calendar 19 end. Uh, you know, we are adding more growth, but the growth is also delivering better ROAs. Uh, and as long as we can continue doing it, we can, we can plan for a capital raise post that. And it also evidences our own comfort and confidence that we can execute on our plans better and better rather than just going to the capital markets very frequently. Okay. All right.